Let's go YouTube back with another one right here. Yes, sir. We are, yeah, obviously can't do Larry Bird. Oh, Magic Johnson. That's that just doesn't feel right now, does it? Okay, so we here. Nice nah, shout out nonstop. Doing how good was Magic Johnson actually? Always gotta leave a like, always gotta show love for sure. Always. Let's get into it. As a five-time NBA champ, three-time league MVP, Hall of Famer, and the straw that stirred one of basketball's most famous styles of play, how good was Magic Johnson really? Humble beginnings. Magic's childhood was far from lavish. He was born in Lansing, Michigan to an assembly worker and a school janitor. Since Magic had six siblings and three half-siblings, his parents had to work extra hard to provide for the family. Realizing his family needed him, Magic rose to the occasion hey. and often chipped in by joining his father on his garbage collection route. His parents' work ethics were not the only thing to rub off on Magic during his childhood, as he picked up on another integral aspect from their lives, a love for the game of basketball. Magic trained with his dad night and day, teaching him the ins and outs of the sport. Magic was Yo. good at ball, as he picked up on another integral aspect from their lives, a love for the game of Yo, Magic should've kept this fro. Nah, the fro, nah, the fro stylish, bro, should've kept the fro skis. You see that? Ugh basketball. Magic trained with his dad night and day, teaching him the ins and outs of the sport. Magic was good, real good. It quickly became clear that Magic had a future in basketball and a chance to give his family a better life. As a ninth grader, he shattered the city record for most points in a junior high game by putting up 48. Then as a hey. sophomore, he recorded 36 points, 18 rebounds, and 16 assists all in hey. one game. Magic was making a name for himself, literally. This triple-double led to a writer from the Lansing State Journal referring to him him as Magic for the very first time, and it became one of the most well-known nicknames in sports history. College life. Magic still had a ways to go in turning the sport he loved into a way to provide for his family. Even though he was a two-time All-State selection and a McDonald's All-American in high school, he needed to prove himself all over again at the collegiate level to potentially one day hear his name called at the NBA draft. But being referred to as one of the best players to ever come out of the state of Michigan, Magic had his pick of the litter when it came time to choose a college. He landed on Michigan State after deciding staying close to home was important to him. Magic actually didn't consider this to be a launch pad for the NBA. Instead, he focused on becoming a TV commentator by majoring in communications, which isn't all that shocking when you consider his outgoing personality. Sure, but his yeah, plan B wouldn't hold him back. Magic thrived on the hardwood for the Spartans and quickly became one of college basketball's brightest stars. As a freshman, he averaged 17 points, 7.9 rebounds, and 7.4 assists and made it to the the March Madness Elite Eight. Sophomore year, he put up near Magic Johnson was like one of the first like just complete players from head to toe for sure. Just well rounded game completely. Um I mean what else can you say? Came right into the league and made an impact. And playing playing for Los Angeles and playing for a team that had Kareem on it as well, which brings even more fame and more pressure onto a rookie like him and he plays point guard so he's he has the responsibility to run offense and the fact that he did what he did and had an instant impact as soon as he came in says so much so 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 much 7.4 assists and made it to the March Madness Elite Eight. Sophomore year, he put up nearly identical numbers, but this time, he led Sparty all the way to a national title. It was the most watched college basketball game ever. Magic outdueled Larry Bird and was named the Final Four's most outstanding player. A star is born. Magic's rookie season ended up being one for the books, but first, he had to make the league. After dominating college basketball for two seasons, Magic decided to enter the 1979 NBA draft. Possessing such a unique skill set for someone standing at six foot nine and coming off a national title, it was no surprise that Magic went number one overall. And while top picks usually join organizations who have fallen on tough times, he was drafted by the Lakers. The Lakers were coming off three straight playoff appearances and only had the first pick as hey. compensation for losing a free agent a few hey. years earlier. But being the number one pick and playing in a city like hey. LA for a team consistently reaching the postseason, there were sky high expectations for Magic. The pressure didn't phase Magic one bit. He managed to live up to those and then some. As a rookie, he averaged 18 points, 7.7 rebounds, and 7.3 assists nice. per game, and oh was named gosh, to the All Star that, team. With seven dime. rebounds and 7.3 assists per game, and was named 7.7 rebounds. What do you and say? 
7.3 assists per game and was named to the All-Star team. And if that wasn't enough, he was a starter, a very rare and prestigious honor for a rookie. In addition to individual success, Magic helped the Lakers reach the finals after going 60-22 and in the regular season. Wow. Then when LA was up 3-2 in the series against the 76ers, Magic's running mate Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was ruled out for Game 6 due to injury. People if you want your notifications on Instagram that like is this, insane. you need to make sure that you're posting at the right time. You're T using the right hashtags and in the front of creating the year. right... People counted and played in position and dominated. Without the Lakers because of this, they had no faith in Magic. But Magic was used to overcoming tough times, and with his family counting on him, he had no choice but to rise to the occasion. He led the Lakers that night to a 123-107 win, as he put up one of the greatest stat lines in finals history. Yes. 42 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, and 3 steals. Oh he was named gosh. NBA Finals MVP, becoming the only rookie to ever do so. Wow. That sweet taste of victory didn't last long, because Magic's second season in the league was one plagued by injury. He suffered torn cartilage in his left knee nice. and was forced to miss 45 games. This didn't stop the Lakers from paying him, though. They recognized they had a one-of-a-kind talent in Magic, so they decided to give him a one-of-a-kind contract. The two parties agreed to a 25-year, $25, $25 million contract, which at the time was the highest-paying contract in sports history. Showtime. With a recovered knee and... 25 years? Contract? Yo. <laughs> 25 year contract oh my gosh healthy bank account it was time for magic to lead la back to the promised land after a disappointing season in which they got knocked out in the first round of the playoffs magic looked like himself again he nearly averaged a triple double with 18.6 points 9.6 rebounds 9.5 assists and a league leading 2.7 steals per game that year he also joined Will Chamberlain and Oscar Robinson as the only players to ever record 700. Also, too, I would like to. Also, too, I would like to state. Look, look, look. All right. People are saying that bad that Magic was a bad defender. He was not a bad defender, but somebody at his height is not gonna have much. It's not gonna have like much of an advantage chasing around smaller guards. And a lot of times when they got and when they got Byron Scott too, they would have Byron Scott guard the point guard when they got Byron Scott. Sometimes they would switch Magic off and he would guard another defender. Sometimes they do that. Sometimes they wouldn't. But he was a great roam. He was Magic Johnson was an exceptional roaming defender too. But he was not off for defense. All right, he wasn't the greatest, but he was a good defender, a good one, not the greatest, but a good one points 700 rebounds and 700 assists all in one season 700 he also joined will chamberlain and oscar robinson as the only players to ever record 700 points 700 rebounds and 700 assists all in one season thanks to magic's stellar play the lakers found themselves back in the finals where they would again knock off the 76ers in six games after recording a series clinching triple double magic was named finals mvp for a second time but the following year philly would finally get their revenge on Magic mm. in the Lake Show. They were again facing off in the finals, but things were different this time. The Lakers were riddled with injuries, with James Worthy, Bob McAdoo, and Norm Nixon all hurt in that series. We may call him Magic, but he couldn't take on the 76ers alone. Revenge became a recurring theme, as did the Lakers making the finals. After leading LA to a third consecutive trip to the championship series, Magic ran into an old foe in Larry Bird, who in an epic seven-game series avenged his loss to Magic in the NCAA a national title game. But this just made Magic hungrier to win more than ever. A year later, the Lakers ran into the hey. Celtics in the finals again, winning this time in six games and reclaiming their throne, as Magic averaged 18.3 points and 14 assists per game in the series. Oh gosh, After four straight finals appearances, crazy. the 85-86 season saw the Lakers fall in the conference finals, bringing an end to their impressive streak. The following season, with people wondering whether Magic was over the hill and the Lakers dynasty had come to a close, Magic averaged a career career high 23.9 points per game mm. while adding in 12.2 assists on his way to winning his first regular season MVP award. Mm. It wasn't just a regular season to remember for Magic. His dominance extended into the postseason where he showed he wasn't ready to give up his crown as he added another title and finals MVP award to his growing legacy. Magic then had enough championship rings to fill his hand.
Magic would go on to make the finals in two of the following three seasons and bring home two more regular season league MVP awards. Hollywood ending. We thought Magic would continue to win awards and compete for titles for years to come, but then everything changed in an instant. Mm -hmm. While undergoing a physical prior to the 91-92 season, it was discovered that Magic's life would change forever. He tested positive for HIV. In a press conference on November 7, 1991, Magic made the news public and announced that he would be immediately retiring from the NBA. Magic was a freak. The news transcended the sporting world. It was all people could focus on. More than a decade later in 2004, it was named ESPN's seventh most memorable moment of the previous 25 years. Then, even though Magic was retired, fans voted him as a starter for the 92 NBA All-Star Game. Magic picked up exactly where he left off, filling up the stat sheet hey. with 25 points, 9 assists, and 5 rebounds. On his way to being named the game's MVP, being named a starter demonstrated just how much fans and his fellow NBA peers respected him, and his performance proved just how good he was. The same should be said for his inclusion in the 92 U.S. Olympic basketball team roster, better known as the Dream Team. There was zero debating that Magic belonged on one of the greatest, if not the greatest, basketball teams of all time. Following a brief stint as coach of the Lakers, Magic unretired and laced him up in the purple and gold one more time during the 95-96 season. Even at 36, Magic made his impact on the court, averaging 14.6 nice. points, 6.9 assists, and 5.7 rebounds per game in 32 appearances that season. He retired after the season ended, saying, I'm going out on my own terms, something I couldn't say when I aborted a comeback in 1992. Legacy. Magic's resume was about as lengthy as they come. He was a five-time NBA champ, three-time finals MVP, three-time regular season MVP, 12-time All-Star, two-time All-Star Game MVP, and nine-time All-NBA First Teamer. Over his 13-year career, he led the Lakers to the finals a remarkable nine times, while averaging 59 wins per season. Such sustained excellence is rare in any sport. But he didn't just rack up personal achievements and bring his team success. Magic transformed the way the game was played. At 6'9", he broke the mold of what was viewed as the ideal point guard, showing that position didn't have to be reserved for just the small guys. Hey. Magic played a positionless hey. type of basketball hey. that was not normal back then, filling in wherever his team needed him. His combination of size, athleticism, and ability was unheard of. He paved the way for and inspired generations to come. Guys like LeBron James and LaMelo Ball, his fast-paced style and prevalence of flashy plays earned him and the Lakers the nickname of Showtime. To this day, Magic is still referred to as one of the best, if not the best, point guards LeBron the game of too. basketball has ever seen. Magic Johnson is definitely the greatest point guard of all time. But Steph Curry... Hey, but if anybody were to say Steph Curry, though, I couldn't argue with it. I wouldn't argue with it. I'm much like, I, I like comparing positions so much better than comparing like two different positions. I don't like comparing two different positions. It's, it's not, it's not fair and it just don't make sense. But I do like comparing different positions because I think that's a, a more interesting debate and a more detailed debate. It's just easier to do it to compare position to position. but. If someone says Steph Curry, though, I mean, I, I mean, how could I fold him, bro? To be honest with you, Curry got fold him, thanks. And he changed the game of basketball as we know it. Forever. But yeah, I'm going to end it right there, man. What y'all think? Larry Bird or Magic Johnson? Who, who, who is y'all feeling more? Who, you know, let me know. Stuck that dialogue down there. Hey.